Hello there, welcome to the Red October Network. Uh, it is uh, a little after about 10.30 here, uh, 10, 23rd, or October 23rd, 2011. I promised that I would make a video for everybody. Hopefully everybody's doing okay. And uh, one of the topics I wanted to discuss was this whole harpering stuff. Now, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually, it's kind of funny to some extent because there's so many people who are kind of saying all these things and saying oh it's it's government conspiracies what uh brought what was brought to my attention was a particular member who I'm not going to mention his name but uh we'll talk about it he actually uh posted something about uh, a harpering out of the uh Panhandle, the northern Panhandle, West Virginia, and uh, that a, pa a partial harboring is uh, forming out there. Now, we're not forecast to have any severe weather within the next 24 or 48 hours, up to and including tornadoes, of course, but uh, there's a lot of things I think that people think are harborings. First of all, harps up in Alaska, we live in the lower 48. So, I'll get back to the uh, topic of, uh, of the radar. There's a lot of things that heart brings could be. Um, a lot of times whenever you get these, because I actually worked with the radars everybody talks about when I was National Weather Service. And, uh, they're, and you might say, well, you know, Steve, you're you're kind of, you're kind of, you're kind of crazy, you're biased, but the thing is with it is that there's a lot of things that create radar anomalies. One of the biggest things that you'll get is you'll get, um, you'll get these kind of circular patterns where they're, uh, where they're kind of, uh, cut off and then there's like a radius and then like a fade out. It looks like, it basically looks like a stack of pancakes. Well, the thing is with it is that I can debunk this right now. When you have a radar, everybody thinks it goes around like this, you know, in a plane that's perpendicular to the ground. What the radar actually does is it goes like this. It's actually in a cone. So it goes, it goes around this, and then it tilts up, goes around. You know, I can't turn my wrist, but then it goes around and around. So what you can do is if you see something where there's those concentric rings, What's happening is with it is that um, what you're seeing is that perhaps in the computer algorithm there was uh, there was uh, not pieces of, there are pieces of information that were missing between the tilts and that can be a lot of things a lot of times radars the radar software we would use uh, with the WSR 88Ds would throw away data. A lot of times we would, if we had attenuation where the where the radar was hitting the ground, we would uh, we would have to cancel it because it was bouncing off an inversion or bouncing off a clown that was basically hitting the ground. So there's that's one thing. Uh, we always test the radar so they'll make like kind of weird stuff, high frequency. If you ever notice heart rings, they never look the same twice. It doesn't make us. It doesn't make any sense, does it? You know, if it's a heart ring, it should look, there should be a pretty significant, like, uh, signature to it. Because all the radars, basically, they use the same frequency. They use everything that's the same. They should look the same, but they rarely do. Uh, another thing that I notice is this person, uh, who's very popular with heart rings, uh, says, uh, 24 to 48 hours. Now, I can debunk that this way. When we knew there was precipitation coming, we would switch it out of clear air mode at, at the radar site. And so what would happen is with it is that uh, when it switched from clear air mode to precipitation mode, we would have a, a shift in the frequency. Now all the algorithms that are using, they see the red, which is 28 dBZ in clear air mode, and then we go down to a dark green or yellow. 28 dBZ. They'd freak out because they'd see this flash, you know, going on, and uh, 
you would see it and you're like, oh my god, you know, that's frequency. Actually, it isn't. It's nothing. It's just we're preparing for that. And chances are that they'll switch it from clear air mode to precipitation mode 24 to 48 hours before, and it was entering these things. So you see there's a little flaw in it. You know, it's, it's not right. Scalar squares, I can tell you right now what they are. Scalar squares are when um, when you have a radar that the radar beam going around it might read some bad data so it'll cut certain certain pieces of it off and so you'll get an incomplete thing now the radar beam goes in a line so if it cuts off a quarter or whatever there you go and it's very common for that to happen um, Radars in general, and this is for the uninformed, radars send out a pulse, but they all, they spend most of their time, almost 99% of the time, they spend listening for the return. And if it becomes out of sync a little bit, it will, it'll, uh, it'll basically be looking, you know, it'll be looking towards my antenna over here, this lovely antenna but it still might be over here and the transmission might have gone over here or it'll be over by the window the transmission will go over, over here and but it'll be listening over on my lovely picture of the window so if it becomes out of sync like that that can also hurt it and so anyways I wanted to answer about this post about the radar that you're seeing and I'm just going to tell you a little secret about it it's not it's actually not an NWS radar that you were criticizing Michael but uh, <laughs> but uh, it's actually a radar site that was uh, it's, it's actually at an airport it's an FAA radar and so we would use it occasionally uh, it doesn't it's not really especially powerful it's just a it's a separate one that you'll see and we don't really have it we didn't never really had access to it and it's just a supplementary radar it's the WSREAD we have which is actually not at the airport I commented on somebody's uh, post uh, about this that there was a harp ring that was centered at Pittsburgh International Airport and first of all the harp the, or the radar is not located there it's actually a couple miles away from the airport at least a couple miles two to four I don't know the exact distance so it kind of lends you know there's there's a possibility that you know if you really want to believe all the conspiracy theories it's what is it is you know it's an FAA radar I mean you'll see input from it I mean it's it's just the radar it's on IntelliCast and everything and so, but it's it's a little bit of a different radar. It's not really long range, and we would use it occasionally. It's uh, it's a little bit of uh, a different radar. But you realize though that the harp rings always look different, you know. And there's a lot of different things that can be used to explain it. I mean, to be honest with you, if you knew what the SPC storm prediction service forecast SPC's forecast is you could basically look at the hard rings that were that were in that region you can go look at SPC anytime you want and I always wondered if all these conspiracy theorists said oh you know there's harp rings in there were harp rings in Texas in August and yeah but you know we just don't talk about them Essentially, if you block off huge portions of the country, like some people have done, uh, and say the eastern two-thirds of the country will have severe weather sometime in uh, late May or early June, of course you're going to hit on it. What can I say? You know, you can feed ignorance, and a lot of people don't know weather. It doesn't say that HARP doesn't exist. I don't know anything about HARP. I know one thing bouncing high energy waves off the top of the atmosphere is basically uh, you know it, it, it might do something in Alaska but nothing's going on here and Herb has no relevance to the weather I mean this stuff has been happening 
you know, there's, I've had times where I've seen radar anomalies over Pittsburgh, and I asked the people at work, and they said they didn't know, they didn't do anything about it. You know, stuff happens with these radar anomal uh, or radar algorithms. You know, they switch, they switch, they get out of sync, they go into test mode, uh, pieces of data get lost. It's basically 80s technology. You know, you have an 80s computer. You know, it, it's just it's uh, it it, it happens because it's, sometimes it's not modern. So harp and all the government conspiracies, they're not real. Okay. I'm just putting it to rest, and you know, if if you if you're one of those people who likes to be, you know, prepared, you can always be prepared for a disaster. In fact, I'll tell you what: every single meteorologist, including myself, says to them, you know, be ready for it. You know, be ready if there's a tornado, if there's an earthquake, if there's a hurricane. That's not the bad part, but just you know, obviously, I'm talking to the people who just insist on insist absolutely positively on on uh, criticizing criticizing people and you know saying that we're, we're doing all this bad stuff and all this and you know I'm not and you know it's just something you want to take a look at so anyways sorry for the glitch here my camera cut off but uh, anyways but that's just some thoughts about it not really private information but anyways since I already know I'm going to get in trouble for this leave your comments we'll uh, see you guys later um, just to prove to you that don't always believe what you hear make some sense okay bye bye mm -hmm.